Hello again. Um, in this uh, segment I'd like to show you some of the new features of this tool here, the Curve tool. Now as you may remember this tool was introduced or rather revamped in version 5, further evolved in version 6 and now in version 7 and particularly version 7.1 we've done a lot of new features, added a lot of new features to it as well. So just as a recap, the Curve tool essentially allows you to add points to a curve and as you click around here initially it's a straight line connection but if you have enough points, four of them or more, it turns into a spline curve that uh, you can further edit. In, in the past you, you would have to go here to move the points and then you could grab the points, move them around. Well in this new version 7.1 while you're in insert mode you can still move the existing points as well. So you can click somewhere where there are no points and a new point will be inserted. Not only at the end can you add new points but also anywhere in between and if you get close to that curve it will insert a point at that location but if you get close to a point that's already there it switches automatically to move mode which makes it a little bit easier to create those curves. Uh, so for instance one thing you could do here is a star that start like this go over here, go over there, over overlap and cross there go down there and then in order to close it you got this toggle here that allows you to close this and so you can while you're still in insert mode you can also go and grab these points now to further adjust the shape and you know in the past you've always been able to do this as well which is to go and stroke the brush whatever the current brush is along that path so if you have the default brush you would see it go like that if you decided you wanted a different color and perhaps also a different size you could go with a different size, with an opacity, and so on, and uh, combine the result of that uh, these brush strokes. Uh, you could also go and select the media like this one here, and that one is a, a very different brush. But you can always undo that and switch back to the curve tool, and the curve is still there. And in effect, you can still see it here. Um, and let's say we erase, and we just use this curve again to render along this path. Now, one thing that you can also do is to tell the system to remember this curve because we want to do an animation, we want to change the shape of this. There's a couple more things even before that. You could say, um, let's say, how to use this curve. Let's say we want to simulate pressure uh, like from a tablet, but I'm using a mouse, but still I want it to start thin, go wide, and then end thin again. To basically mimic this uh, change in, in pressure controlling the size. You can do that, but you have to make sure that the settings here in the brush do allow, if it is a custom brush, do allow for the custom brush to be transformed and that the tablet controls the size. That will basically let it simulate if it is a custom brush. If you don't have a custom brush, if you have just an internal brush, you don't actually need this particular flag here set because this one only addresses custom brushes, uh, large image brushes. For internal brushes, um, what you still want to do is the tablet to control the size. So that way if you erase and then go and say render it along this path but kind of simulate the, um, the pressure, you will see that it starts up here at the first point really small and gets bigger and bigger and comes back and then back down to small size. Um, there's a couple of other things but let's not go too much into what's already there. I mean obviously we can fill with the current settings, perhaps enable the paper texture and fill with that. So you see the paper texture in the brush um, or in the paper environment. Um, there's also the fill to the um, to the alpha channel so you can render this curve to the alpha channel. Let's go and clear this to get a better look at that. So when you render to the alpha channel, there it is, it makes it a selection and that's one of the new features here. We've actually had this render to the alpha channel before in 7 and I think even in 6.0. Well here now you can either add or subtract to the alpha. So you can not only replace or render into the alpha as a new selection like I did just now, but you can also add to it or um, subtract and that allows you to make much more sophisticated shapes and selections. Um, in this case I'm going to just use the replace if you want to see what that looks like. Under the selection menu you can say store alpha and I will grab a copy of your current alpha channel and sure enough it shows the currently selected segments of the star that I rendered into the alpha channel. Um, why, uh, you know, where, where do we go from here? Well there is there's a couple of more features now added and what, what you see here is you can you can see okay we have the fill settings we got the gradients and that allows us to control how the, the fill is actually occurring rather than this 
plain green with some paper texture. Maybe you want some uh, patterns or maybe some gradients to be rendered in there. So those can be controlled here as well. Paper texture can be further refined if you want a different type of paper texture. Uh, maybe a, a bigger scale, maybe more like a dinosaur skin. You render that and so it renders that paper texture right in there. Um, let's see. Okay, so now let's move on to this tool here. This is the Roto Tools, and this is where you can rotoscoping, but also a couple of other things. Motion track, and that's if you already have an animation. But let's say we start from scratch, and we just want to create a shape that is animating by itself. You can do that here. Um, let's do this the following way. First of all, I'm going to create an animation, and it will be just 30 frames long, very short. And... What I'd like to do is have these points move over time. Now, right now, I have this original uh, alpha channel that was rendered. Let's go clear that. All right. So I can edit these curves and move them around. And I'd like it to remember the shape at this point, and then as I go to the end of the animation, perhaps get back to that point. But somewhere in between, I'd like to change it. So I'd like to very quickly make an animation where perhaps this star is moving into a different shape. Oh, look at that. I moved, I clicked a little bit off it, and so it added another point. This one I can delete easily here. There's a delete point. Uh, so I can click to delete a point and then move if I want to make sure I don't accidentally insert any new points. Um, so anyway, let's go back to the first point here. And I want to memorize that. So set a keyframe of this entire shape. And that's what you do right here. Roto tools create keyframe. So what it does is it shows you here is a keyframe and the position of this little label is uh, actually uh, adjusted based on where the points are so you kind of see it no matter where the points go because it's always kind of the average of all the points. But um, it remembers this location, this shape of the star and it also sets one automatically for you at the end so you can quite easily do a looping animation of this shape. Uh, but you can certainly go and change that and in fact if I wanted that to change into let's say a flat line I could move these points here this one over here and kind of mimic a flat line or close enough anyway okay I can go and keyframe that at that last position keyframe there so now I have two shapes that are keyframed this one here at the beginning and the one at the end over here and you see as I'm scrubbing through the animation it's automatically giving me the transition of these control points of the spline curve. Um, and so I can make a shape and perhaps I want to have two or more two more shapes here. So I, I can go and perhaps uh, make it look like the star is kind of rotating by just moving these control points around a little bit from the original shape. Right? And keyframe that. So we have now a total of what? Three keyframes, right? You see one here. There's no keyframes here. These are interpolated shapes. And then here is a keyframe. That's the first one. And we got a second keyframe here and the last one at the end. Let's do one more somewhere around here. This one will try to mimic a cube. So we'll make it like this. This one here. This one here. And then we could, uh, well, it's not exactly a cube. It's going through a spline interpolation. Now, of course, you could change that here. You could go to a, a straight line interpolation but that will go along the entire animation. Let's go and memorize that, create a keyframe here. And so now we have it go from this star shape to a rectangle and eventually to a flat line. Um, one thing I think I'd like to do is actually keep the, the smooth shape uh, with the spine interpolation like this. All right, so, so here's a set of shapes for this curve. And you know, you can get out of this curve tool and back into perhaps selecting your brushes and working with uh, other brushes and at some point you say oh it would be nice now to actually render that path or that that particular brush along the uh, the path that you had created and you can certainly go do that so uh, let's go back to this one my hot dog brush um, and I go back to the curve tool right there and the curve is still there in effect and you notice that these icons, the, the blue ones, uh, the plus uh, to add, insert a curve, or the, the one to move them, or to stroke one, these are gone. These are uh, blocked because currently you cannot delete these curves because they are a keyframe. The only thing left to do is to move them around and or to toss them all and restart from scratch. So you can delete the entire curves if you want to. Uh, you can also not delete the curve, yet delete the keyframe. So you can delete a particular keyframe. Right, so you can you have all the tools here to manage your keyframes. 
Uh, but what I'd like to do is basically now go and render, just like before here, render the curve, right? Render this brush along the curve and then render it again at this shape. But I don't want to do this manually. I mean, it would be tedious. I can certainly go here and I go to the next curve and here, render it again, go to the next curve. But that would be kind of tedious. Now, it allows you to see whether it's really heading the way you want. You can scrub through what you've rendered so far, but it is kind of tedious to do it that way manually. And it will certainly be much easier if we could simply tell the system to take the current brush and stroke it, stroke it along the path, along the entire animation. And we can do that now in 7.1. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, let me go and right click here and clear all frames. And so all frames are now back to blank and the curve is still there. And now I'm going to go to the filter menu, animated. So it's one of the new animated filters right there at the bottom called stroke path. And when you do that, it will take the brush and stroke it along the path. Now it's going to do that across the entire frame sequence of the animation. And you see it evolving right there as it's doing one frame at a time, rendering that uh, brush, which can be a very sophisticated and complex brush, and rendering it along that. Alright, and then so in a couple of seconds we've just created this little animation. Alright, so now let's say we decided that's cool but not cool enough. We need to perhaps change some parameters on this brush. This particular brush happens to be a custom brush, so we can probably go here and store it to manage it. Yep, sure enough, there it is. Maybe we want to make it bigger or smaller. Um, maybe we'd like to change the hue of the brush to give it kind of a bluish tint now. Let's go look for greenish. There's some green. Yeah, let's give it like this. Right? And also make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so that brush that I'm using now can also be passed along here. In fact, if I want to see a preview of the brush, I can go here and uh, where is it? There, PRV. And that gives me a preview attached to the cursor. So we can see how big or how small it's going to be now. Maybe I want to make it a tiny little bit bigger. There you go, that will be green, and then we'll do a third one that will be blue eventually on top of that. So, But right now, all I gotta do is go back to the curve tool, and I'm not going to erase this sequence, okay, because I want to render on top of that. So I'll just do the same thing again. Actually, I don't have to be in the curve tool anymore. I can stay here and simply go to the filter, animate it, and say, stroke the brush along the path. Well, we abbreviated that and just say stroke path. And so again, we can have the current brush rendered over the prior image sequence, which was from the first rendition of the brush. So this time we have the green rendered on top of the orange. And there you see, and you can tell that the green is a little bit smaller. We still see the orange uh, borders around it. But what I'd like to do next is make it way smaller, something like this, and then also um, bluish, dark blue, there you go. And then on top of that, I want to have the brush uh, with a much bigger step distance. So it's going to be more of a, uh, you know, single dots visible rather than uh, this very uh, tight uh, appearance of the brush. So what I'll do is essentially uh, work with the step distance here to have it uh, somewhat more of a separate dot appearance there. And so that way now if I render one more time this filter animated stroke path along the entire sequence will actually have um, an appearance of these dots along on top of the, the, the green background of uh, the prior render. So we now have this rendering done like this. And so hopefully that will give you a first idea of uh, some of the nice uh, features you can do now, some of the great animated uh, shapes and capabilities that were added in version 7.1 of PD Pro Howler. And I look forward to showing you more great features very soon.